One day, Spike arrived to Pornoville to see his old friends Applejack, Rarity, and Rainbow, and the others. He didn't mention that he was going coming over, since he had been the ambassador of friendship for, for about the past 15 years, and he had been doing his common well of his, his work to try to maintain peace on other cold kingdoms, which wasn't easy at the beginning. But when he arrived to Pornville, the other points there who did know about him, they were surprised to see him, especially when they saw it was Apple Bloom, Scootaloo, and Sweetie Bloom. They were all happy to see their friend again. They hadn't been seen him for over about a year, since he had been traveling around in other kingdoms most, most of the time. But he said they asked him what he was doing in Pornville. They didn't know if there was any some sort of crisis or any conflict or problems going on, but he said there was nothing as an, an issue. He was just going to be, he was just passing by, he would just uh, walk, step in and see, hide his old friends, since he hadn't seen them for a while, which they, which they all agreed. But they had to go back to school since they had some tasks to take care of. But he asked them not to tell anyone that he was there, at least to their friends. And of course he promised. So Spike then decided to go see his old friend Big Mac. He went back he went to the corner to buy some some snacks and sweets and then later go to Sweet Apple Lakers. There he met Sugar Bell and Apple uh, Big, Big and Macintosh working. And they were happy to see him. Especially Big Mac. He had been seeing his friend for over about a year. And then they started talking about what he has been doing over the past year. And they all listened carefully. But there was something that Spike mentioned. That he had missed his friend so much. But he had been seeing Twilight from time to time when he got to Cantonal. But he never had time to see his old friends in Pornoville, so he decided maybe it was time to take a break from this, his duty as an ambassador for a short time, so that he can spend some time with his older, old friends. Even Sugar Bell said, since you have been doing so quite well over your work, you deserve a break. You don't have to overwork, overdo your work so that you burn out yourself. And Big Mac is just says, yep, that's true. And later, though, Spike actually remained at the farm when Applejack and Apple Bloom arrived. Sugar Cube, Spike, you are here, aren't you? That's right, Applejack. I'm back. At least for a while. And, of course, Applejack was happy to see her old friend in Hogtail. And they has a lot of things to catch up with. They spend the rest of the afternoon talking and talking about his old adventures and his past well as a teacher and to be as ambassador and he was just happy to be back but there was not something that he wanted to tell upon his own about but he wanted to wait to gather all of them in one place Spike, what are you even doing here? Apollon asked. Well, there is one other reason I actually came by, but I will tell every pony when I wail together. Even Twilight, she asked. Yes, she is also coming over, but she is not aware about the true reason I am here, says Spike. Spike, the next day, had get all his friends at the castle in the cutie map room. It has been ages we've been here, said Rarity. Yeah, said Fronshine. But Twilight isn't here yet. But then suddenly the door opened and Twilight stepped in and every pony was happy to see her, hugging her, saying howie. So Spike, you want us you summon all of, us here, all of us here? You want to tell us something? Yes, there is one thing I, I want to tell you all. 
Perhaps you can maybe sit down. This might surprise you all. At least the reason why I came here. At least, and also some of you all. Every pony sat down and Spike, he decided to tell them something that he has happened to him. But before he could do that, he needed to tell them something about that. But exactly how? They, all his friends just stared at him. So, what is it, Spike? said Fanishai. Well, the true reason I actually did came here and some of all um, there might be a bit surprise to them. Um, you see for the past three years when I have been traveling around the kingdoms you know been trying to maintain peace yeah we know said Rainbow um, Every time when I get to Montu Dragonlands, I always see Amber. And since she recently got married with um, Garble, when they're having two a two kids together, I am great for them, happy for them both. And especially you now they have well, uh, we organized so that the Dragon Lord is now like a queen and king title, something like that. So, anyways. Every time I was been there, always seen them, but there is one of the reason I have been going back there for quite some time now, for the past three years. And what would that be? Um, I actually have started seeing a dragon in Dragonlands for the past three years. Wait, you have been seeing a dragon, but you never really told us, us that, but for three years? What? Why not that, Spike? Twilight asked, surprised. I, well, you see, the first reason when I, I didn't tell, tell anyone, any, any of, on any of you, for the first time though, because when I first started seeing her, I wasn't sure if this particular re this relationship with her would last, because. She would be would be my first girlfriend ever, and we weren't even sure if we were even connected in some way, because even we were two dragons same age, we did spend a lot of time together. We used swimming around in the lava lakes or or having lava surfing, but. There was something about that, some chemistry seen up between us that made us to realize we had some shared affection towards each other. We loved each other. The only ones who know about this is, of course, Amber and Garble, said Spike. We didn't want to tell any other, anybody else and until at least we wanted to make sure this, this, this relationship would work. So if Applejack, sorry, if Garble and Amber knew about this, why didn't any of them tell us? Ask Applejack. I asked them not to tell, and she did so her she as well. So, what is her name? Ask Gravity. Her name is Starkis. Starkis? Yes. Her name is Starkis, and she is the true love of my life. So, is there any other things you want to tell us? Um, well, she is actually coming over to Ponyville within a day or so to meet y'all. I, since she knows all, all about you, but I wanted to take the next step to be able to introduce her to you. So, my ask, why us? Well, you see, I had met her to her parents and her siblings. Like she has four brothers and five sisters. So they're like ten children in her family. 
that's a big family since Applejack. Yeah, it is. And of course, since they were happy to know that, know that she has been finding some some dragon to be with. So, but since I have met her family, so I decided to meet and let them meet my family. But since I told her right then that I basically didn't have any biological family, since I never knew my parents. Or, or if, if they're even still alive, or even, well, you know, I, I tried to search for them for many years, but never find any evidence or any trace of them, or what happened to them. Even, I even had asked Torch, the former Dragon Lord, but he had any, not, nothing happens. There's things like no, no archives or any uh, city records or any birth records. So, but. But I told her, since Twilight was the one who helped me during her exam, and uh, and she basically raised me, like a, her own brother. And so I told her that Twilight is like my sister, and her parents are like my grandparents, and all of you are like my aunts. And to me, all of you are my family. Basically, I only knew you're only then at all I had known for some long, so long time. And when I told her that, I was expecting she start laughing, saying, "Ponies and siblings, or at least family." But she didn't laugh. She didn't actually understood when I told her that I never actually never know about my true parents, or if I even had any siblings. I tried to find them, or any find or any reason why my why I was found as an egg. I even had to ask Celestia, Luna, or even even Discord at all, but nothing. Anyways, I just told them. I told her and her parents and her siblings about meeting her, that she will meet my my family, which I explained they were all ponies, and. They was okay with that. When I told them, well, when I told them about my background, since I never thought of really find my true parents. And that's basic of all. And all of the others are silent for a moment. So you invited her to be here? Yes. Well, I still see any problem with that, said Twilight. I mean, since you like said, I raised you with help from parents and shining armor. Yeah, I can stand that. Same here, said Rainbow. I mean, I can like I can see your uh, you as my tough nephew, said Rainbow with a smile. Yeah, I I understand if any pony here wasn't want to be beating her if you were all busy. Actually, I think we can take a day off from school since after all the weekend tomorrow. Yeah, said Fluttershy and Reggie. And I can actually take a day off from, from my teaching as well in Cantaloupe and the rolling for one day, said Twilight. After all, it will be all like old times. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And the rest of the day, they all sat in the castle and spent time together. But next door, but the next day though, Spike was so nervous that he walked back and forth, back and forward in the castle. And Twilight noticed that. Spike, don't be nervous. Everything will be fine. I know, I know. I just worried how things will be turn out if she would like any of you or, you know. Yeah, I understand it's like. But then suddenly a big knock on the door. Uh, should I open? Spike, if this her should need to open. Otherwise, how will we meet it? Meet her. Good point. Good point. Then he opens and next, and sure enough, it it's, was Starkis. Sweetie, I missed you. And she smiled so that she's missing him. This is Twilight. My 
adopt a sister. So that is her who raised you all this time, said Starkiss. That's right. And you must be Starkiss, Spike's girlfriend, I suppose. Yeah. Or kind of a bit more than that. Wait. What do you mean? Um. Well, let's say that he is my fiance. Wait, Spike? Can I talk to you for a moment? Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, you can go into the library right over there, right? You didn't mention that you were engaged? Uh, yeah, kind of forgot about that. And is there something else we should know about? She asked. <sighs> yeah, that is true. Another one thing. Else. She is actually, well, she is my fiance and she is uh, pregnant. Yeah, wait, how do you know? Um, can I guess? So, you didn't mention any of this. Well, I, I wasn't sure how you all react. I mean, I want to be senior for three years and be on the engaged for one year, and now we're just going to be expecting a baby. How do you think I ever react? Or do you react? Or were any of your friends? Spike, you know that we all would trust you and love you all. Even if you would tell us that you're going to be a parent, we won't be so excited. And you know, Pinky, she would be so excited that you would probably have a party that same day when you told her. Yeah, but I decided to wait. Um, I wanted her to be here herself. So that you can be confirming all that. So, when is the wedding though? That's... we haven't even put a date on yet. We... we won't decide to wait until at least... well, maybe a year or so, but we haven't exactly put exact date for that. But then, another knock on the door. And I was see her friends who came over. Let's talk more about that later on in the others are in the library. Uh, yeah, right. Well, the others were in the library. They talked to Starkiss, and she felt warmly open acceptance from them. And then Spike announced something else. Um, there is one thing that I did mention about yesterday. Well, two things actually, but the first is that. Stark is, Stark is isn't not only my girlfriend, but she is my fiance. We have been engaged for about a year, and we are expecting a baby soon. A li well, an egg within a few months or so. Every pony just dropped their mouths and said, Are you kidding me? Should you? said Apple. Are you serious? said Rainbow. Are you going to be a dad and you didn't tell us? said Applejack again. Yeah, he is going to be a father and we didn't tell you, or at least he didn't tell you because he wanted to see how we all reacted. And as the spy expected, it was a big silence for a moment. But then the silence broke. But this means a big party, said Pinky, and just rubbed, jumping up and down in the air. And before any pony could say anything, Pinky had already decorated the entire library to celebrate it. Pinky, said Twilight, yeah? You know, you don't have to celebrate all of these things as a big party. Why not? This is a big celebration. I mean, Spike engaged and having a baby soon. I mean, what did you expect? said Pinky. Yeah, right. All right. But, all right. But, Storkis, are you okay with this as a big party? And she just nodded and smiled. Of course, Spike. This is something which you all should have done months ago. By the way, Spike, said Applejack, have you told or, or is her family know about this? About the engagement and the baby? Um, 
Did they gave me they know about, but the baby, no. In, not yet, at least. While you have to tell them soon, you might be showing their... They might find out that you have an egg and... Said Rarity. Yeah, we are waiting for that, said Starkins. Rest of the day. They all had a big party then, and even get to know each other all better. But Spike said then that he's going to stay in Pony, at least for a short while, and Starkins as well, since they want to know more about the Pony culture, and Spike wants to show her around in town where he grew up most of the time. And during their time in Ponyville, Starkins was so intrigued about the Pony culture. She, even she didn't like much of the food, like hay burgers, but she actually did enjoy much other things, like the comedy club place they had, even the bowling alley, or most of the music. She even liked the readings they had, the books. She had actually thought maybe they could do something back in Riderlands. Maybe do something to maybe intrigue that some part of pony culture into dragons, like building cities, hospitals, and sort of things. And since over the past year or so, they have been starting to build, build uh, cities in Dragonlands, but so far it was only a small scale one. But even during their during the stay in Drag in Ponyville, Spike and Starkis felt so happy that his family had accepted her. At least, even accepted that the baby was going on about a baby on the way, and they were sometimes going to be married soon. But all that would change. With with another few months, Spike had invited all his friends, all his family, and including some delegations from other kingdoms to the wedding in Dragonlands. And of course, it was a great day. Spite had asked Big Mac to be his best man. And of course, even during all this time that happened, Spike was never be the same. After this wedding, he was told about something. It turns out that Starkis, right after the wedding, only about a day after, had fallen ill, seriously ill, and he was shocked because during the day before, he she felt really well, but now, all even on the honeymoon, she felt seriously ill. Even dragons in that particular time had no idea what is causing this, except for Torch, since he has been the dragon lord for many, many decades before Amber, and since he has been around for a very, very long time, for at least several centuries, but he knew exactly what it was. This was a rare dragon illness, known as flare disease, or at least flare sickness. And the only treatment was on some a flower apparently was having this healing ability. But there was just one thing though. The flower was rare and it didn't even grow in Dragonlands anywhere. It has never been. It seems that this disease was so rare, no point our dragons had even heard about this. Only Torch and other few elderly dragons did. So Spike had asked Torch for, for advice where to find this flower or how it looks like. But since he had never seen the disease or never seen the flower in himself, all he could tell though where to find the flower, or at least where he's supposed to be going to find it and what it looks like. And the flower was like like a rose, but it was both yellow and red. And it has a scent of 
fire. And it was called fire, blo fire blo flower, or even fire lily, which many dragons call it. Spite asked, where can I find it? But Torch, he said, I am not so, so certain, Spike. I never seen this flower myself since it has been at least 300 years since any dragon had this disease. It is so rare. But at least from what my in my memory where you can find this particular flower is somewhere north of Dragonlands. Exactly where? Spite asked. That's something I don't can exactly pinpoint it's a true price. Amber had actually had been, been willing to send out dragons to find this flower. And Spike accepted his offer, but then he asked Torch once once another thing. Torch, how long can how long can she survive without the flower? At least how much time she need had how much time has she remained? Not long. A few days. Only a few days? Says Spike Razor angrily. Yes, I'm afraid it's not that long. Is there anything we can do for her? I mean, at least ease the pain or something? There is one way that may be tried to that. What is it? Put her in ice. Ice? Is that it? I'm afraid, I'm afraid yes. There is only that only reason that most dragons haven't had this. And that's the only, the most only other thing that could ease some of the pain and the, how to feel of the fever. At least some of it. And Spike didn't know what to say. So he thanked Torches for his help. And within a few days though, Spike has been taking care of Starkiss by taking her to Ponyville. By there, he couldn't have her cold enough in the castle since Twilight had been taken off some more time from the castle in Canterlot to look after Starkiss. But within another day or so, the dragons who has been sent out to find a flower from by order of Amber didn't find it. Spike was getting desperate. He spent almost two days, almost two nights in the library in Camp Ponyville to find any any sort of answer or even some any location where the flower could be. But the other books had no information. No dragon's diseases or any cures on for dragons. He even went to see Sakura. If she might have a flower in her in her hut, in her in her home. But sadly, she didn't. He asked her if she knew if the flower could grow somewhere else, like in Equestria or perhaps any of the other kingdoms. But the only thing that she knew for sure that this flower did actually grow somewhere else in Costa, but she never learned exactly where. The only place that she had the might possible that it could grow, it was somewhere in the south of Costa. That was the only place that she heard about. But then she also heard it might grow somewhere in near the borders to Griffinstone. So, Spike had asked Gallus, who is now the royal guard captain, asked him to send a message to the new king of the Griffinstone to ask if there was any point of Griffins who had heard about this particular flower. And it was also immediately important to be find any answer right away as soon as possible. Within a day though, Gallus came back with an answer. The Griffins did know about uh, did know about the flower, and they knew where to find it. 
Spike was so beyond happy to know it. And he asked Gallus where. And Gallus told him. So Spike flew all the way to the Gryffindor. There he met the new king and his guards, telling him where to find this place. And they died on the place though. Spike did find the flower. But there was one catch. The flower was growing on a hillside in a deep gorge, in a canyon. But this canyon had some stones that were quite steep, and he couldn't fly down there. So Spike jumped over the edge of the canyon and landed on, this, on the ridge by his claws and walked down there by climbing. He got the flower, put it in the back, and walked all, crawled all up the way to the top. And he flew all the way back to Pornel, where Sakura had been getting ready for to repair the medicine. And if Spike had even arrived within maybe a few hours or maybe a day later, Starkis would not have survived. But during that time, when Spike did come back, he actually had hand over the flower to Sakura, who made the, the cure and gave it to her and got, gave it to Starkis. Spike waited all night outside the room where Starkis was sleep, sleeping. He was worried. Will he lose his own wife and their unborn baby? But early next morning, when Spike, who had fallen asleep outside in the corridor, was woken up while the door was open. But it wasn't Starkiss. It was Twilight. She came out of the room and he was expecting the worst. But then he saw the Twilight smiling. And with that, he knew. Starkiss had survived. But so far she was still weak and needed some more extra rest a few days to be really, really fully recovered. So Spike had sent a message to, to Amber so that she could inform Starkey's family that she had been recovered. And also, turns out Sakura never used all the flowers that Spike came with. Since Spike, one of the flowers was actually given over to Twilight, she had decided maybe that they could grow this particular flower in Equestria, more particularly more the closer opponent. So have this flower ready if there would be any sort of outbreak of this disease or any other dragons would have it just in case now. And when she informed Amber and Garble about this, they both agreed. This was a very close to losing a Spike's wife as a friend, and both of them would be very appreciated that if the ponies might have this cure on storage for at least if this would happen again. And within about a week, Starkiss was finally fully recovered from disease and she was happy that Spike had done so much helping her by look after her even to try to find any answer from Storch, Amber and even had gone to all the way to Griffinstone to find the flower and able to find it and give it to Sakura in time and within a few months Star Kiss laid the egg, and within another few months later, when hatched, and they had a baby daughter. Spike was so be happy, so he was so happy that being a father himself, and even his friends could not have been happy for him, since it was so close that he could have lost 
his own wife and his own daughter without any of he if he haven't been been there just in time. Spite had played his mind in his thoughts about this over and over many times over the past few months after that she was saved. But Starkis told him, Spike, don't think like that. I know you want to be make sure that I did survive, but listen. Sometimes things cannot go for, go as as we want to. So please don't think like that ever more. And it didn't. Within a two years, Spike and Starkiss had another egg, which later turns out to be a boy. Starkiss and Spike could not have been happier for at least their own family. And even though Spike, if he had never had been traveling so often to, to Dragonlands, he would never have found, never would have found a meet Starkiss. And even assuming though, if she still would have to see this disease, even if she didn't have that spike, it's very unlikely she wouldn't have survived. But Spike was just happy that she did and that they have this amazing family. And that's how Spike and Starkiss found a true love and got the family. The end.